a siege is appropriate? Cutting off power, cutting off water, well, uh, Israel does have that right. It is an ongoing situation. Excellent day. An excellent day, chat. It's good. Good Here things have dog. happened today. Not exactly things I wanted to happen. I would rather that nobody get prosecute for, prosecuted for war crimes because they haven't committed them. But unfortunately, lots of people have committed war crimes. And finally, we might see a day of reckoning. I think it's really important as well that the ICC applications for arrest warrants were made in the same statement. So Lokud members and Hamas members. I think drawing that, like the kind of implicit drawing of an equivalency between the Hamas leaders and Netanyahu, I think is a really important message. First of all, because it's triggered a bunch of Hasbarists, right? It's made the Netanyahu stands absolutely seething with rage, seething with rage that they might get compared to Hamas. Because we've already called them, you know, two sides of the same coin, really and truly. Netanyahu has already called the ICC anti-Semitic. I don't think I can stress how dangerous it is how absolutely piss poor it is for the genuine societal toxin of anti-semitism to get weaponized in such a flagrant fashion because all it does by netanyahu cheapening the definition of anti-semitism is give sucker to real genuine anti-semites and cover for them to just say oh, well they call anything anti-semitic because clearly they obviously do do that they clearly call anything that they disagree with anti-Semitic to the point at which, you know, internationally renowned criminal, international criminal lawyers can get called anti-Semitic for holding people to basic standards of LOAC, which clearly Israel haven't done. And this is a dangerous paradigm, which I don't see going away anytime soon unless, you know, Likud gets cast into political irrelevancy forever. But again, of course, Look at aren't the only people who have blood on their hands on all of this. The whole of the war cabinet definitely do. Although Gantz hasn't made many actual statements in the same way that Gallant has, or even to be fair, Herzog has as president, even though he doesn't have any actual legislative power to get held criminally liable, in my understanding, in this specific case. But I'm glad, again, that the equivalency has been drawn because we can understand that, you know, people who refuse to commit to following LOAC, get their comeuppance. I think it's worth pointing out as well that the state of Palestine, since its recognition by the United Nation, is now subject to the Rome Statute. So it's going to severely hinder the movements of Hamas leaders because they will now automatically end up getting sent off to the ICC if they step outside of countries that aren't signed up to the Rome Statute. Although what it does do is it puts the Palestinian Authority and other members of the Palestinian Legislative Council in an invidious position in the a future governing body of the Palestine state that wants to have a coalition agreement now cannot include Hamas. Because as soon as anybody from any Palestinian faction, whether it be FETA, whether it be the PPP, whether it be some of the more militant groups like the PFLP, for example, who want to engage in some kind of future Palestine state governing body, they are now signed up to the Rome Statute. And so if they ever want to get into any kind of power sharing agreement in a future Palestinian state, it can now never include Sinwar and Hania. Because as soon as they try to enter into any agreement, whichever Palestinian leader, whether it be Abbas or Barghouti or whatever future leader of the Palestinian state might be once elections are held, they'll have to get Hania and Sinwar deported off to The Hague. Assuming Sinwar is still alive, which I'm assuming he won't be. I think essentially most of the Hamas leadership have essentially admitted that some kind of future bargaining and future election within the Palestinian territories is inevitable. The likelihood of Hamas gaining huge amounts of power within that coalition is low. And now that means that it should put huge, it should put huge amounts of pressure on Israeli negotiators to release Marwan Barghouti from incarceration in Israel because he is basically the main person who will be able to stop Hamas from winning the legislative elections and sending the future Palestinian state into even more levels of uncertainty. 
which, you know, I think is going to be an interesting development moving forward. But the shame, the guilt and the shame should never leave people like Rishi Sunak, David Cameron, Keir Starmer, Emily Thornbury, David Lammy, Grant Shapps, all of these people, all of the people at the upper echelons of our government and shadow government who gave cover for these international criminals. I hope the shame and the guilt racks them for eternity, and they deservedly should do. They'll never be able to live down the tacit endorsement of these war crimes that they were happy to engage in when they thought that it was politically relevant, and indeed that they still do to this day in the case of the Conservatives that I have mentioned already. I mean, so much so, rightly so, the Scottish Greens have called for David Cameron to resign over his complicity in Israeli war crimes, and rightly so, as they well should as every other party in government should be calling for a resignation of David Cameron. And of course Rishi Sunak as well, because these have been the ones who have been directly implicated in all of this. But of course I believe that Keir Starmer's position is completely untenable, not that anybody else will care, because Palestinian lives and commitment to international law is essentially of no relevance to our political class. Indeed, it is no relevance to people like Joe Biden, who calls this absolutely ridiculous, even though he was making lauded claims over the ICC's similar judgments over people like Vladimir Putin based upon their conduct in the Russo-Ukrainian war. But of course, international law, it only applies to enemies of America, chat. Friends of America, they can get away with it. They can get away with whatever they want if you're a friend of America. Unlike the base centrist pill, which is you set, you take Putin and Netanyahu and Sinwar and you send them all, send them all to the ICC. As I tweeted out earlier on today, we should lock up Bibi and Sinwar in the same cell and film it for some kind of grotesque Dante's Inferno ironic punishment odd couple TV show, a la Black Mirror. And that's what really should happen. Not that I think it will, but even so, even so, hopefully it will. Today will be seen as a turning point, as a day of reckoning, as a day of shame for those who've given support to any of the war crimes in this conflict. Any of the war crimes in this conflict. Again, I will ha continue to make the explicit point here that the Hamas leaders are just as culpable for war crimes as the Israeli leaders are. Of course, the scale is lower, but the veracity of the claims and the level to which the, the crimes are indeed violation of laws against crimes against humanity are identical identical so people out here trying to justify you know the crimes against humanity that committed on october the 7th whatever, they can be they are just as culpable as any of the western leaders who've defended netanyahu and Yoav galan and the israeli war cabinet's actions in gaza anybody who is trying to impede a peaceful settlement is somebody who I'm in disagreement with. Send Bush and Blair to? Absolutely send Bush and Blair to. 100%, 100%. And quite rightly, we should be looking at people like Ursula von der Leyen giving all of that support to Israeli war crimes as head of the European Union. So much blood has been spilled, and hopefully we shall see. Even if it's not justice, at least we will now. We will now have a chance for people to declare which side that they are on. People must declare whether they believe in international law or not, whether they, be whether they believe in the rules-based order or not. Now is your chance to decide whether you're on the right side of history. Exactly. No more prevaricating. No more gaslighting. Either you support people like Netanyahu, Yoav Gallant, Yahya Sinwar and Mohammed Daif getting sent over to the ICC, or you don't. You must support all of them, or you do not care about international law. Now is the time to put the foot down and show the world that regardless of who is your friend, if you commit war crimes, you'll be tried in The Hague. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Where are the three lead Hamas leaders in Qatar or Gaza? So two of the leaders are in Gaza, which is Yahya Sinwar, which is the leader of Hamas in within Gaza. There was Mohammed Daif, who is the military leader of the al Qassam Brigade, which is Hamas's military wing. And there's Ishmael Haniyeh, who is head of the Hamas Politburo, who is stationed in Doha. The ICC was also pretty explicit in calling out the kinds of atrocities Hamas committed. I would hope this shuts down some of the denialists and conspiracy theorists. I agree, absolutely, 100%. Although it is worth pointing out specifically that one claim I think is really important, because it will set the conspiracy theorists on both sides in disagreements with reality in that 
The explicit claim in the applying for the arrest warrant was the use of sexual assault and rape by Hamas based upon those in captivity, because that's what the UN report says. The UN report is explicit in terms of strong evidence showing rape being used against hostages within the Gaza Strip. But what it doesn't do is give any credence to the narrative that rape was used as a systemic tactic of war on October the 7th, which a lot of pro-Israel types seem to continue the line of, even though that there's no evidence for it. And on the contrary, there are plenty of pro-Palestine people who, in their desire to want to absolve any pro-Palestinian side, because it might detract from the, gr from the greater cause, which I believe in, the greater cause being the liberation of the Palestinian people, they feel like even acknowledging the crimes of Hamas and the resistance brigades undermines the struggle, the, the genuine struggle of the Palestinian people. Because I'm sure, I'm sure that there are going to be plenty of pro-Palestinian people who will refuse to note the well-documented UN case for rapes being done against people who were held hostage by resistance brigades in Gaza. And likewise, the pro-Israel types will try and use this as a vindication for their nonsense about the use of rape as a military tactic on October the 7th. And indeed, the idea that this was widespread, when again, there's just no evidence for this, because it's part of their, their kind of Hasbro's propaganda campaign. So again, there are plenty of people, I hate to be enlightened centrist on this, there are plenty of people on both sides who will engage in denialism at the statements being put forward here. And again, at the end of the day, the chips are down, the chips are down, either you support international law or you don't. And I've been clear from the very start, if you are pro-Palestinian, even if you are pro-Palestinian armed resistance, you must also therefore continually, continually support it only being done within the confines of international law. You see these claims all the time, people saying things like, well, Palestinians have the right to resist occupation militarily under international law, and this is 100% correct. And one thing that I support, but what is not under international law is the kind of civilian attacks that were engaged in by the resistance brigades on October the 7th. Not only is it morally repugnant, not only are they war crimes and crimes against humanity, but on top of that, they undermine, they broadly undermine the struggle for the Palestinians' freedom and the struggle for the resistance against Israeli occupation because it gives Israel essentially Casus Belli to be able to respond. All of those claims of, well, you don't have the right to protect your own occupation is true. Israel do not have the right to protect their occupation because it's literally illegal to occupy the current Palestinian territories in international law as Israel currently do. But what Israel does have the right is to protect their own citizens. So if you start attacking citizens, suddenly you get lost, you get m mired in all of these stupid discussions about, well, Israel has the right to defend itself, being used as a Trojan horse to defend the occupation. Because the entire Trojan horse for the entire time has been the, well, Israel has to occupy for its own civilians' protection. And once you target civilians, all of those claims get given tacit approval. And they shouldn't do, because they're nonsense. And that's the simple truth of the matter. I thought it was worth looking through Karim Khan's official statement so we can see exactly the kind of things that we're looking at here. So you can see the people who are being uh, targeted here, the actual crimes that are being prosecuted, potentially, if indeed the arrest warrants are applied by the judge. For example, you're seeing claims of extermination, murder, taking hostages, rape and other sexual violence, again in the context of captivity specific here torture, inhumane acts, cruel treatment and outrages upon personal dignity, all of things that, again, we have documented evidence of all of these things now, whether it be the actual footage that the al Qassam brigades broadcast on October the 7th, or the UN investigations into their conduct. And there's an explicit... So when I originally read this, this statement, in the context of rape and sexual violence, I thought that in the context of captiv captivity only applied to pursuant to Article Section 8 rather than... Uh, article 7 but it does make the explicit case here in the the sexual violence including rape is about being held in captivity specifically and there are some in, and the investigations into reports of sexual violence on 7th of october are ongoing so the explicit claim that's being made here is specifically in reference to being held in captivity when you look at netanyahu and galan the main claim here of course is the starvation of silly villains as a method of warfare and this is why i specifically would call this being a campaign of ethnic cleansing in the the deliberate and manufactured humanitarian crisis is essentially one of extermination which is also being referenced here as well
This is also really important to the ICJ's case of genocide because manufactured starvation is an act of genocide by other words. Well, again, it's exactly the same kind of conditions that were imposed upon the Bosnians during the Bosnian genocide. Like, the explicit blockade during, like, the siege of Srebrenica reminds me a lot of the kind of intentional starvation as a weapon of war as being really important with regards to the genocide case. So this would be really interesting to see what happens with all of these claims moving forward. Where they get if they get trialed in absentia, for example. So that if the arrest warrant is made, but they cannot be taken to the court because they never enter a country, sign up to the Rome statute, they might get tried in absentia. And if they do are found guilty of the deliberate starvation of civilians as a method of warfare, then I believe that that would also give a lot of ground to the claims of genocide as well. So their claims about starvation have been done through loads of different pieces of information and they claim that Israel intentionally and systematically deprived the civilian population. So again, real kind of Bosnian genocide style stuff here. From the siege, including the border crossings, the siege that was, again, literally the very same siege that was given tacit endorsement by Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak and the rest of our political class are from the main two parties. This is the very siege that they're talking about. The cutting off of food and medicine, electricity and water on the 8th of October. This was when, just after, just before, sorry, Keir Starmer was asked and he gave it his blessing, essentially. My office submits that these acts were committed as part of a common plan to use starvation as a method of war and other acts of violence against the civilian population as a means to eliminate Hamas, secure the return of the hostages and collectively punish the civilian population whom they perceived as a threat to Israel. When you look at the statement here, that there essentially can be no doubt, there can essentially be no doubt that this was done deliberately. The effects of the use of starvation as a method of warfare, together with other attacks and collective punishment against civilian population of Gaza, are acute, visible and widely known, and have been confirmed by multiple witnesses interviewed by my office, including local and international medical doctors. They include malnutrition, dehydration, profound suffering, and an increasing number of deaths among the Palestinian population, including babies, other children and women. Famine is present in some areas of Gaza and is imminent in other areas. As UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned more than two months ago, one point one million people in Gaza are facing catastrophic hunger, the highest number of people ever recorded anywhere, anytime, as a result of an entirely man-made disaster. Today, my office seeks to charge two of the most responsible, Netanyahu and Galan, as both co-perpetrators and as su superiors pursuant to Articles 25 and 28 of the Rome Statute. Israel, like all states, has a right to take action to defend its population. That right, however, does not absolve Israel or any state of its obligation to comply with international humanitarian law. Notwithstanding any military goals they may have, the means Israel chose to to achieve them in Gaza, namely intentionally causing death, starvation, suffering and serious injury to body or health of civilian population are criminal. It's clear as day. It is clear as day. Any, any Hasbarists who try and tell you that, that the conduct of the IDF is the most moral army in the world are just liars. They're just liars. I'm so fascinated by all the people who made justifications for war crimes all saying now. People will try and get us to pull out of the ICC. I reckon the main result of this is going to be people wanting us to pull out of the ICC. We might even get to the point where the first people to use the Hague Invasion Act might be the fucking Democratic Party. It shows you how different they are from George Bush, eh? I don't think that anyone who served in the IDF should be welcome in Australia, but have participants in genocide shouldn't have safe havens in peaceful nations. Oh yeah, absolutely. We should be... Those who have dual citizenship who've served in the IDF, that shit should be revoked immediately. Immediately revoke that shit. It won't happen, though, because our political class are continuing to try and lie to us that Israeli military aims in Gaza are reasonable or have been engaged in in good faith. So by you know, removing, by removing citizenship of those who have been taken part in the IDF who have dual citizenship, that would again be endorsement of the fact that the, 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 the military aims were unnecessary, which therefore would never happen because our... Our politicians would never do it, but absolutely, they should. They should be removing these people's citizenship. Realistic prospect of conviction is the standard that Khan and his team set their evidence upon. Exactly, yeah. Anybody who's now defending Israel, how they should be completely excised from British politics forever. Anybody who has any point defended any of the things that Khan says there's a realistic, pro a realistic prospect of conviction for, assuming that these arrest warrants get put forward by the ICJ judges, or these ICC judges, sorry. Hey if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.